Maserati as a brand has had a, how can we put this, a rather interesting past few decades. Over the last 30 years or so, ownership of the company has changed hands several times, eventually landing up in the hands of FCA, the guys that do Fiat and Chrysler. Now some may say that that is a bit of a crime, but it's not. You see, FCA has also got shares in the likes of, well, Alfa Romeo and Ferrari. And that's good news for Maserati. It means that they were able to put a fresh new lease on life on the Maserati nameplate and the brand, introduce a few new models. One of those new models that was introduced a few years ago was the Maserati Ghibli, a nameplate that we hadn't seen for well over 20 years. 1994, in fact, was the last time we saw the Ghibli. But it is back, and for the 2019 model year, it has been updated. Underneath the hood of this Maserati Ghibli S is a 3-litre twin-turbo V6, making 316 kilowatts. The old engine used to make 302 kilowatts, and it's been bumped up for the 2019 model year. They've bumped the torque up as well by 30 newton meters, so it's up from 550 newton meters to 580. Now this makes the Ghibli S good for a 0 to 100 km an hour sprint time of only 4.9 seconds. This engine is mated to a ZF8 speed gearbox. It is a traditional torque converter gearbox and it should sound familiar because there are so many other performance cars that use this very same gearbox. It is tuned to perfection and it's a wonder to use. So we've got it here with these carbon fiber pedals behind the steering wheel. They feel great in the hand and it just makes engaging with the gearbox so much more pleasurable. Really reminds us of the Alfa Romeo Giulia QV. There's this rather strange connotation around the Maserati nameplate and people think that it keeps company with the likes of Ferrari and Lamborghini and Pagani and all those Italian exotics when in actual fact it comes in at a fraction of the price and competes with some of your prestigious German brands, BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Porsche. So where does that position the Ghibli S then? Well, it puts it up against the likes of Mercedes-Benz E-Class and the BMW 5 Series. It doesn't put it up against the Aston Martin Rapide and those other four-door supercar saloons. No, this goes up against, well, those German executive saloons. And it's actually priced accordingly. So the tech is largely similar. We are going to get a fair amount of tech in the Ghibli S. It's not outdated there. We've got a beautiful touchscreen infotainment system here. And we've got driver assistance systems. We've got lane keeping assist, active blind spot assist. There's forward collision warning and traffic sign assist. There's a 360 degree surround view camera and, well, a host of other connectivity and entertainment options in the Ghibli S. The interior is beautifully designed. It's not as cluttered or as quirky as many think a Maserati could or should be. It's actually rather logical. You could actually hazard to say that it's, well, rather safe and conservative. Inside, there's enough space and seating for four adults. But I must concede that not all Ghibli S's are going to look like this on the inside. You see, this one has the carbon package, which gives us this beautiful, genuine carbon fiber trimmings on the steering wheel, the door cards, the dashboard, and here in the center console. It really does elevate it. It's the way that I would spec it quite comfortably, offset beautifully by this red stitching. And you can get the Ghibli S in a further three derivatives. So there's the Bogo standard Ghibli S package. Then you can get the Grand Lusso, which is a bit of a luxury package that will see it draped in slightly more luxurious, elegant trimmings. And then of course there's the Grand Sport, which we're driving here. And that changes a few things on the exterior as well. So you get a slightly different front and rear bumper. It's a little more aggressive. It really is a good looking vehicle. It was designed by Marco Tinconi, and Marco Tinconi is responsible for designing vehicles 
like the Alfa Romeo 4C and, in fact, the Alfa Romeo Giulia. So the man knows what he's talking about. He's got that typical Italian flair and design. But he's managed to incorporate that in the Ghibli without making it stand out too much. So unless you get it in a loud and leery colour, people may just, well, glance over it. Not even give it a second look. It doesn't mean that it's boring or that it doesn't look good. It looks really good. I really do like the headlights and the taillight detail. And with this carbon pack, with the carbon wing mirrors, the little pillars and that little rear lip, it looks phenomenal. I really do like the way that it looks. And it drives great as well. And that's what you want to know. You want to know is how does it drive? Well, Ghibli S has a near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. All that power, that 316 kilowatts, is sent to the rear wheels. So it is beautifully agile and nimble. It reminds me very much of the Alfa Romeo Giulia in the way that it sort of pivots around its center. Now it is equipped with the Skyhook suspension, which is a continually varying damper rate suspension, which means that it's reading the road surface and adjusting the damper settings to give you the best ride. You can stiffen it up. We've got two settings here. We've got the normal and we've got a sport suspension mode. And that really does stiffen it up and you can feel all the little vibrations and weightens up the steering a little bit. And all of this is amplified when you push the sport mode. Because then you can hear the engine as well. And this engine does sound good. It doesn't have that shrill ring of a Ferrari V6 twin turbo like you're going to get in something like the 488. It's got a slightly more guttural roar, and that's rather pleasant. For a four-door executive sedan, that's the sort of sound you want. It is a menacing sound. Now, combine it with these paddles that we've got back here, and you can also switch it over into full manual mode, which is going to give me full control of the gearbox. You've got quite an engaging driving experience here. Oh, the box on the upshift. And then the brakes, the brakes are good. Good, we got beautiful six pot calipers up front, dual calipers at the rear, always for the handbrake, but it's dual calipers at the rear. Phenomenal braking great feel through the steering, it really does feel good and proper. It really is an enjoyable drive, there's, there's a sense of occasion from it. And that's something that you're not necessarily going to get from a BMW 540. Sure the BMW M5 is going to make more power, does it have that character, that prestige that's associated with the brand. Certain circles, sure, yes it does. But if you had to weigh the two up against each other, I think it would be quite a difficult decision. Now you add into that the fact that Maserati will love selling you a second-hand version as well. They'll even extend the warranty. If the used Maserati is less than six years old, they'll include it with a two-year warranty as well as a service plan. They don't mind getting you into a used one, it doesn't have to be new, they just want you in a Maserati and I think that's great. I think it's safe to say that I'm quite taken with the Ghibli S. It's a worthy alternative to those German executive sedans and there's a Ghibli out there for everybody. Ghibli, Ghibli S or Ghibli Diesel. But this S, you can even choose to have it Grand Lusso and Luxurious or Grand Sport with a little bit of spice and pizzazz. It really is the choice for the driver out there that is looking for something a little bit different, a little bit special, a little more exotic.